Welcome, welcome, welcome into the Sheik and Ball podcast. I'm your host, Elsa Truth, and I want to set the table for today's show. We're going to talk about the Minnesota Lynx, the Atlanta Dream, and then we got a rapid fire recap of college basketball. We're going to be asking a lot of questions on this show. Feel free to answer one or all in the comments. We greatly appreciate it. All right, but your boy going to kick this thing off with the Minnesota Lynx. They finished with a record of 19 and 21, ended up in a tough series with the Connecticut Sun. But before we talk about the outcome of that series, let's talk about my favorite player on the team and one of my favorite players in the league. If you know, you know, Nafisa Callier. For crying out loud, she played this season less than a year after having a child. Six foot one four, five year pro, all with Minnesota. Three time All Star, two way player, gets blocks, gets steals. Nafisa Callier is the primary scorer for the Minnesota Lynx. And just because she's out there playing the big four position, don't mean she can't shoot that thing. And she got that ISO and go move where she can take you from the top to the block. Hey, she got a clean fadeaway, more turnarounds than a circus. She got a deep bag out there like she carrying the bottle of Merlago. Now this girl played 37 games, which I'm going to equate that to a full season. 11 double-doubles, 6 games with 30 or more, including a season high 35 points against Atlanta. Dropped 31 in the closeout game against Connecticut. Her 21 and a half points was good for 4th in the W. Rebounds was good for 7th. Not only is she a willing passer, she hit 34 threes and made 52% of her shots inside the 22 feet. And don't forget, she's been getting busy since the new millennium. She won the national title as a freshman at UConn. Minnesota Lynx, in my opinion, needs some more guard play because right now it's just ISO and go. At their guard positions right now, they got K-Mac and Diamond Miller. But I got a question for everybody in Minnesota. What happened to Ariel Powers? I mean, I don't know if she got something going on with the coaching staff, but her minutes was way down from the previous year. In the previous season, she started 31 games, and this season, zero. She scored a season-high 20 points against Phoenix, then played eight minutes in the next game. There was only a total of five games she even played more than 15 minutes. Coach Cheryl Weave, I know everybody love her. She's been coaching the team since 2010, four championships, but the last championship was in 2017, and that was with Maya Moore. Since then, 1-5 in, in the playoffs, two straight losing seasons. I'm sorry, but I need to see some change or some adapting to the new style of players because ain't no way you're sitting area powers like that. Team averaged 80 points, which was fourth worst in the league. They got some pieces on the team, but they need a lot more if they expect to compete for championships again because Maya Moore ain't walking through that door. Minnesota Lynx lost a tough series in the playoffs against the Connecticut Sun 2-1. They gave up 90 points in both losses, so they could really use some help on the defensive end and at the guard position. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. How you feel about Nafisa Callier? Can you tell me why Area Powers is not playing? And your overall feeling about the Minnesota Lynx? Well, let's keep the show moving. Next team we're going to talk about today is going to be the Atlanta Dream. Now, the Dream finished with a record of 19-21. and 21. Believe it or not, three teams in the W finished with that same record. But keeping it with the Dream, with some nice young growing talent on the team, Ryan Howard, Alicia Gray, Cheyenne Parker, and Reserve Aaron McDonald. The thing that hurt this team the most is their offensive efficiency. As good as Ryan Howard is, she just got to get more efficient scoring the basketball. She shot 38% this season and last season 36%. And I get it, y'all gonna say it's her rookie and sophomore seasons, but you just can't close out that many possessions with missed opportunities. Offense ain't running like a hot oil machine, it's running more like an old rust bucket. My next statements are gonna be directly to the Atlanta Dream coaching staff and front office. It's time to start Ari McDonald. How long y'all gonna keep her as a reserve? I know she 5'6", and y'all probably worried about her being a defensive liability, but it's time to take the training wheels off. You guys play 2-3 zone half the time anyway. Get some better rim protection or advise your players to get back and help contest layups. I see way too many uncontested layups. Not saying go out and get BG, who she is an unrestricted free agent, but somebody that can block a shot. Scout the college scene for some length or pick up a free agent that's specifically for shot blocking. You got Stephanie Dosit out there, Natalie Achamwa, and Ari McDonald, she was a big-time star at Arizona. Her marketability was at an all-time high. Then to bring her off the bench for three straight seasons, I don't, I don't get what's going on. After 2022, when she averaged 11 points off the bench, you would think that would be enough to get her in the starting lineup. I mean, who else out there making plays? She draws attention because of her height. 
If people would just hit open shots, then her assist numbers would go up and her playmaking would look a whole lot better. Look at how she break down the defense and dishes. Coach Tanisha Wright, former player in the WNBA, you think she would understand, but I know I'm not at practice, so I don't see everything that she see, but I don't get why Aaron McDonald was not starting. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. All in all, I really do like this team. I think it's time to move on from Danielle Robinson. Time to pass the baton to Aaron McDonald. But, I, again, I do like this team. They could be a contender if the offense ran a little bit better. And now it's time for our college basketball rapid-fire recaps. 5'9 junior guard Isaiah James playing for the NC State Wolfpack, currently averaging 16-4, and four, season high 26 points against the Charlotte 49ers, shooting 42% from three. I don't want to call her a corner specialist, but you leave her in that corner and it's automatic three. And I want to talk about where the teams are ranked, but the rankings change every day, so we're going to keep that for another ep. And her teammate, 6'1 junior guard Sanaya Rivers, currently averaging 13-6, and six, season high 33 points against the UConn Huskies, NC State Wolfpack currently 7-0. Six foot one senior guard Paige Beckers, still dotting eyes with a smile like Kid Pancakes. Three games with 22 or more, season high 31 against the UCLA Bruins. UConn currently 4 and 2. She might be granted another year of eligibility, but we'll see what she'll do after the season. Six foot senior guard Caitlin Clark, still schooling them kids like a first grade teacher. She has a season high of 44 against the Virginia Tech Hokies. Iowa Hawkeyes currently sitting at 7 and 1. And we all want to know, is she going to go pro? If she do, she might pull a goddamn Candace Parker and win Rookie of the Year and MVP. Six foot four, senior four, Cameron Brink. Damn near giving us 50, 40, 90. Season high 29 against the Duke Blue Devils. Also a six block game and three games with 16 rebounds or more. She turned herself into a stretch four. And I'm telling you, she be out there battling because they be pushing the hell out of her. And if you didn't notice, we're talking teammates today. Her teammate, 6'4", four, four, Junior 4, Kiki Arayafin, putting in that work with her front court teammate, also averaging a double-double. Three of those recorded this season with a season high of 30 points against the Florida State Seminoles. Stanford Cardinals currently sitting at 7-0. Five foot ten freshman guard, my laser for Wally. Highlight waiting to happen. She's a plus in every category this season, and she scored 11 or more points in every game she's played. Coach Staley ain't completely let her off the leash, but once she do, it's going to be something to behold. And let's talk about her teammate, six foot seven center, Camila Cardoso. Four double-doubles recorded this season so far. Season high 23 against the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. South Carolina Gamecocks sitting at 5-0. We've talked about Camila on a few episodes now, but she just been killing it all season. She used that six foot seven height to her advantage. Five foot nine senior guard Charisma Osborne contributing like an NIL donation. She's gotten two double doubles, recorded a season high of 24 against the Bellarmine Knights. And how could you not root for somebody with a name like Charisma? Shout out to her parents for picking out one of the best names for a young woman. And you can't give her no room because she out there trying to stretch the flow like Damian Lillard. And her teammate, five foot eleven sophomore guard Kiki Rice, doing everything but Kiki Keen. Also, two double doubles recorded. Season high of twenty four against the Yukon Huskies. UCLA Bruins sitting at six and zero. Kiki is giving the team a little bit of something everywhere. She would be fifty forty ninety, but she's shooting eight ninety five from the free throw line. Just announced, Angel Reese will be returning to the LSU Tigers. Can't wait to see her back on the court. And no, I don't believe none of that bullshit about her having a low GPA. Something must have happened at practice and she was suspended for the team. No star player has ever been suspended because of their grades. When it comes to basketball or any sport for that matter, it's a workaround for everything. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Expect a breakout season from Dijanae Carrington. Six foot guard, four years at Stanford, one year at Baylor, so you know she got it all going up top. Baby girl got a crazy layup package. She under the rim more than a mechanic. I can't tell if her teammates don't like her or if the coaching staff don't like her, but she's increased her point average every season, but her minutes have not increased. She averaging eight points off the bench. Per 36 minutes, she giving you 17 and six. I honestly think some players and coaches in the W don't like these girls coming into the league with the social media presence, hair done, nails done when they playing, because that's not how the game was played when they grew up. 
And when I watch Connecticut, I'm watching to see her play. I'm always like, damn, why the coach ain't putting her in the game? And then when she get in the game, she only in there for like a couple minutes a half. I don't see her teammates passing her the ball. She always got to get it off the backboard or get some easy type of layup. If you're not going to give her no playing time, just go ahead and trade her and let her play somewhere else. She's played 92 games for the Connecticut Sun and only started in three. I just don't get it. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. And that's also all we're going to say on today's show. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Greatly appreciate your time. I'm your host, Elster Truth. Turn on post notifications because you know we're circling around college basketball and getting you ready for the WNBA season.